Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on just the CW as a whole, but also playing into the DC TV side and the Arrowverse side as well. So, as most of us should know, we are not only getting the final season of Superman Lois later this year, around October roughly, with all those final 10 episodes in that final season most likely airing before the end of the year, depending on exactly when the premiere date hits, I guess. But with the end of Superman Lois also comes the end of DC TV on the CW or CW. They took out the the a couple of months ago, but I still call it the CW anyway. Now, this, of course, started all the way back in 2001. It was, you know, it was the WB back then, but it started with Smallville. And now it gets us all the way to the end of 2024 and maybe a bit of 2025, once again, depending on release date for that final season of Superman Lois. So almost a quarter of a century of dominance on that network for DC TV. Pretty crazy. But with the end of the DC TV side of things on the CW is also a concern that the other major shows on the network, which were all existing shows before the acquisition of the CW by Nexstar, could also be in danger of ending, or in better terms, being cancelled. But could they just let something like the CW, which harboured many iconic and generational shows for you know now two plus decades, just die off like this and just become a rerun network, or worse, just cease to exist? Well, I don't think anyone has a sure answer to this. Like, there's analysts out there and different analytics and stuff like that, but no one's 100% sure, but Deadline did put a pretty decent rundown of the CW's current predicament and where things could possibly go as a whole, as well as with specific shows on their network. Of course, none of these will be DC TV shows due to Superman Law has done filming its final season already, and it's just a wait and see for when that releases. But because the CW has clearly been a big part of my channel in regards to the stuff that it's produced and stuff like that, and it's probably a big thing for a decent amount of people watching this video. You know, it's, it's been a provider of a good amount of your viewing for TV shows. I thought it was worth covering and giving my opinion. But of course, speaking of opinions, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you want to leave a like, a like on the video, sorry, and just show your support, drop a like, it takes two seconds. But anyway, I've got the deadline thing here, but I sort of like twisted it into my own words and how I wanted to present it. But it's pretty much what they had to say, just with a twist of my stupidness, I guess. As the CW's transformation under new owners Nexstar continues with the addition of sports as well as acquired scripted series and international co-productions, questions are persisting about the fate of the last remaining dramas from the old CW. With Superman Lois set to end with its upcoming fourth season in the fall, that leaves All American, its spin-off All American Homecoming, and Walker. They all film in the US, making them more expensive to produce than Canadian-made dramas and come from former CW co-owners Warner Brothers and CBS. From what Deadline has received, it could be a very challenging business proposition to have all three series continue on the CW. The sobering realization di differs from the brighter outlook shared by the president of entertainment for the CW, Brad Schwartz, in February. So while monetary reasons are an issue here, it was believed that was also the case for Superman Lois, and that's why it ended prematurely with season four. But the CW's Brad Schwartz did state a few months back that Warner Brothers and DC, they were the reason the show was ending. It wasn't the CW's fault, it was all their fault. So what's the truth? What's the truth? Because now all these other remaining shows that were there with Superman Lois, those two all-American shows on Walker, they're an issue because of monetary reasons. But Superman Lois wasn't? Question mark. But speaking of Brad Schwartz, he had said this previously about the content coming from Warners and CBS. CBS and Warner Brothers have been so wonderful working with us on those shows, and we've gotten both of those shows to an economic area, where as long as uh, they keep rating, there's no reason why we can't keep them. It's no longer a financial question, it's a creative and performance question. Now, due to decline in ad revenue across the board of network TV, not just the CW, but the CW has been looking for more savings beyond the ones initially identified in the network's pursuit, you know, of making a profit by 2025, so they're almost there, as its owners, owners continue to spend on non-entertainment programming with live golf, uh, college football and basketball, uh, you know, uh, WWE, WWE Next, like so not even proper like Raw and SmackDown and stuff next. I don't know what that is specifically. Inside the NFL and the NASCAR X Infinity Series bringing its sport offerings to 500 hours next year. Now to do that, the CW has been relying on lower cost scripted series, Canadian co-productions like Wild Cards and Sullivan's Crossings, as well as acquisitions like The Chosen have been drawing respectable viewership, reducing the pressure for the network to bring all three of its pre-existing dramas that are still in play. If they may no longer be must-haves for the CW, for Warner Brothers TV and CBS Studios to keep producing them may be a no-go. 
Now, shortly after Nexstar actually acquired that 70%, so the majority share of the CW, and then brought about this cost-cutting measure plan that they were going to do, their executives floated to CBS, uh, CBS and Warner Brothers a target license fee, which we talked about previously, for drama series of $1 million per episode max going forward. Now, that was much lower than the license fees that the CW had been paying for its dramas at that point, which ranged from low to mid $1 million to high $1 million, close to $2 million an episode. So this is those like ones, you know, bought around two would have been your probably superhero shows. And then the ones that really filmed in America, especially Los Angeles. Now, at the time, the idea was met with resistance, as you'd expect. In reality, the license fees went even lower. Deadline here is that the CW pays for the remaining four pre-Next Star CW original dramas from WBTV and CBS in a span between $500,000 and $1.5 million an episode with Walker and All-American Homecoming closer to the lower end of the range, making it hard to sustain them. There has been conflicting information whether the license fees are staying flat for next season or getting reduced. It may be a mix of both. So with this, we can assume Superman Lois was probably on the higher range around that $1.5 million an episode. Uh, and once again, it puts into the question of why it's really ending. Was it Warner Brothers in DC that stopped it or was it the CW? Question marks. Now, All American is believed to be in the strongest position to continue as the, you know, it's the most established and most popular among the CW original series for the past few years. And, you know, and it was actually exempt from the actual acquisition deal. It was like, you can keep, you you can buy the CW next star, but you have to renew season six. Like, I mean, All American was the first show renewed. And then it was like months and months and months until we heard about any of the other shows. And that's because they were a part of the, the deal that season six had to happen. And along with this, and like it being guaranteed the renewal, its license fee is also to believed, believed to be much more generous north of that $1 million max. So the series that also films in Los Angeles did not have to go through the deep cuts that its spin-off, All-American Homecoming, which also films in Los Angeles, had to go through last year to secure its third season pickup at a lower license fee that resulted in reductions of the series' regular cast and writing team along with touring production costs. Does that sound familiar? That's is that's exactly what happened with Superman Lois. Series regulars went down, smaller writing team, and what we can assume is smaller production costs because they're not filming anything in really expensive, even not, not even necessarily expensive areas, but just things that cost some form of money. So it's very similar to what's happening with Superman Lois, what we're seeing with All American Homecoming. But Superman Lois, we know is ending. There's nothing about All American Homecoming at this stage. Now, regardless of the numbers and the popularity, a potential season seven of All-American would likely require a budget cut. The drama has been building towards telling a complete story creatively after seven seasons by wrapping the art for its main character, who is headed to the NFL draft after his junior year in college. But recently, All-American was actually given an extra two episodes added to its sixth season, which is, you know, it's common for a show in its first season. You see that a lot. They might go from 13 to 15 or, you know, 13 to 21 or 23 or something like it happens especially in like years gone by maybe not so much now but you know in a show in its first season it was fairly common but definitely not in a later season like this especially season six so many people believe that these two extra episodes will wrap up the story that they plan to tell in season seven presumably you know what they saw as their final season so that will be a wait and see but many believe this to be the case you know, I'm, some of you might have seen that news, but that's why. A lot of people believe these two extra episodes are really just a cram, almost like an epilogue of sorts to this story. And they might even flash forward like a year or something after a certain episode into those final two episodes and then do a mini sort of finale movie sort of thing. Now, according to sources to Deadline, it is very hard for US studios to produce drama series for the current size of the CW license fees without going the international co-production route. Doing it in the United States, even in various states with tax incentives, I think Texas is one of them, I think, uh, is virtually impossible without major production compromises, like cutting further the number of filming days, significantly limiting the different locations they can shoot in, and opting against big lighting packages, which would make for inferior product that would be hard to sell internationally because it just wouldn't look very good on screen. Of course, the CW filmed most of its content in Vancouver for many years to bring down those costs, as well as Atlanta and just the few like the show here or there in los angeles but a lot of times they were like sitcoms so i remember like crazy ex-girlfriend and the can't remember the other show but it was like the the virgin jane the virgin that's the show that i think crazy ex-girlfriend and jane the virgin both filmed in los angeles but that was shows that they were it was it was fine to film them there like they weren't these big things that used outdoor sets like the, the dc tv shows and everything like that 
And of course, many other genre-based network shows across the board do the same. They film in Vancouver, they film in Toronto, everything like that. Another challenging thing for the international sales of existing CW dramas is the fact that the shows are part of an old young adult brand that no longer exists. Like if you see like the CW and then the new shows they're making, it's like, well, hold on. When I used to watch a CW show, I was getting The Flash. I was getting Riverdale. I was getting Vampire Diaries. I was getting iZombie. I was getting this, that, and the other. But now I'm getting like Grandpa Joe fills his pickle jar with stuff. It's it's weird stuff like that. It doesn't really fit the brand. So the CW's new brand is nowhere near as clearly defined as the outlet it's looking to become, which is like in the, like the big five entertainment network, where it's competing with NBC, CBS, Fox, everything like that. It's all over the place. But from what can be seen in the forecast for about a year from now, maybe 24 months, arguably the CW will have like no flagship shows of what people would have thought of the network from not just years, but decades gone, go, uh, gone by and won't just be a shell of what it used to be, but a completely different being itself. No DC, no young adult, and really no genre. That's the big thing. A CW to me wasn't necessarily, oh, you had to be a teenager or you had to be in your early 20s or something to enjoy it. It was a genre thing. If you wanted genre network TV, it was the place to go. Some analysts have predicted that the network will essentially become a rerun network for sitcoms that have ended their runs on other networks. So like Big Bang Theory, Young Sheldon, Goldbergs, which things like that, or just cheap reality shows. Both, both of those things, reruns of old sitcoms and the cheap reality shows, already have a place on the network. They just aren't the dominant force, at least for now. So yeah, this big thing with the CW over the next 12 to 24 months will be very interesting to think. Uh, be very interesting to see, might I say. But the thing is, is that once Superman Lois is done, not only will I have no reason to tune into anything CW related, I'm sure most of you guys watching and just anyone that's watched CW in the past will be the same. Because as I said, it's a lot of reruns or just random shows that a lot of people don't care about. And it's no offense to those shows, it's just that it's not what the CW was built on. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens over that next period of time, whether it's a year, whether it's two years, or even if they can hang on three years. But a lot of people are thinking by this time next year, we'll know what's happening because Superman Lois will be done. A lot of people think that the All-American spinoff won't get renewed and it could just be All-American and Walker that continue. And that probably won't be enough to keep the network afloat in regards to like consistent views and like people sticking around. So I'm intrigued but it'll be something that I won't necessarily keep too close of an eye on and just be like, when it comes, it comes, but it'll be interesting. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. If you drop a like on it, show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various thoughts and everything we went over in this video. Always curious to read what you guys are thinking. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.